So welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders, and thinkers. Today, I'm delighted uh, to be joined by, I'm not sure whether I should say Jason or whether I should say Bunsen and Beaker, but I'll let him <laughs> explain that to you in a moment. Uh, you're very welcome to the podcast, Jason. And I want to begin by asking you to introduce yourself in full. Tell us a bit about what you do, your background, your career journey. And of course, for people who maybe aren't as familiar as I am, the whole Bunsen and Beaker story. So <laughs> over to you, Jason. Uh, well, first off, thanks for inviting me on the podcast, Simon. Um, it's it's nice to be in the interview e seat instead of the other way around. Um, my name's my full name's Jason Zakowski, uh, and my day job I am a chemistry teacher. I teach in Canada, grade eleven and twelve, interbaccalaureate chemistry, and I'm the science department head of my large Canadian high school. Um, so I'm super passionate about science. I'm a scientist myself. I have a degree in chemistry and then an after degree in education. Um, so that's kind of like what I do from my nine to five and had a bunch of things not gone kind of the way they did. That's what I, I would have probably been very happy with that career. It's a very, very, very busy career and super rewarding. Um, but about five years ago, we got this little Bernice mountain dog named Bunsen. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Bernice mountain dog puppy, Simon, but they look like little bear cubs. And uh, he was very, very adorable. So his pictures, we just wanted to share some photos of him with our friends and family on social media. I had zero social media presence at that time. <clears throat> and then, you know, he Bernie's Mountain Dogs grow huge. Like they're a big dog. So he became a giant dog. And I was sitting in my classroom one day and he's just a good boy sitting beside me. And I was like, you know, he's so big. He probably could wear my lab coat. And uh, so I put my lab coat on him and, and Bernice Mountain Dogs are usually very agreeable to whatever you want them to do. So he's like, whatever, it's time to do a thing, whatever. So I put my lab coat on him and his head, like they're, they're, they have these big heads. So I just put my safety glasses on him and he just sat there and I was like, oh my goodness, he's so cute. So I took a picture of him and that blew up on social media, this photo of a dog wearing a lab coat and safety glasses. And it wasn't until like a couple months later that I started a Twitter account and I tweeted out a science fact from the perspective of a dog. Like, did you guys know that the M&M casings were for, used to be made from beetles? Um, and uh, But it's too bad they're not made from bacon. And I put a little doggy spin in there and that went bananas. And I was like, I think, I think there's something here. And over the next couple of years, our Twitter account grew um, and our Instagram account grew. And then during COVID, we got a little puppy named Beaker, um, who's a little golden retriever. And the two of them were this dynamic duo of goofiness and serious, seriousness and adorableness and um, wholesomeness. And that's when our account really took off. And we then it became this big science communication account where every day we communicate science through a lens of empathy and cuteness. So if somebody doesn't know something, that's okay. You don't shame somebody for not knowing something. That's the empathy. And then we have a cute dog photo to get the hook and then the science to teach the lesson. And it has been very, very effective on Twitter. And uh, I, I'm learning short form video content in the last six months. So our TikTok account is growing too. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. And then from that grew our audio show, The Science Podcast. I'm the host of The Science Podcast. We have two audio shows, Pet Chat and Science Chat. We have a massive community uh, and a huge newsletter. Um, so that's, that, that's me, Simon. Jason, thanks for that introduction. And <laughs> the people, the people who are now intrigued about Bunsen, the Bernese Mountain Dog, and Beaker, the Golden Retriever, I would encourage you to go over to the Twitter accounts or the uh, Instagram accounts or during the news. There they are uh, for those watching <laughs> on video. Uh, Jason's wearing the sweatshirt and the merchandise, which we'll come on to. Um, but it is incredible because I know a lot of people spend many, many years hoping that a tweet will go viral or something will happen. And by mm. putting a lab coat onto Bunsen and your safety goggles, 
the thing blew <laughs> up and it kind of started from there, didn't it? it I think so. That w- it was that plus me tweeting from the perspective of a dog, which is very weird, right? Like, um, I think when I try and explain this to people that they don't know about Bunsen and Beaker, they're like, what you, you pretend you're dogs. And I'm like, I guess so. (laughs) Um, But it's very effective um, that people can quickly, like people, people look to Muppets as real characters, right? So it's the same thing with the dogs named after the Muppets. I think just for people listening or watching, you've probably got one of the largest and engage most engaged science communities going on on social uh, media on yeah. Twitter for sure. Yeah, for we're sure one of on Twitter. Of, I mean, yeah, one of the a couple of hundred icon, thousand yeah. people interacting with you at any yeah. given time. So, and then you mentioned the newsletter and yeah. building community. So when it, when obviously you didn't start with those numbers, could you maybe just tell me a little bit about? You know what came first? Did you say all all of a sudden oh, we better get a newsletter or we better start building the community? <laughs> How did all that work, or has it just been building up over time? So, I never hope that our tweets grow viral. What where our growth comes from is consistency and giving our followers what they want. So, like it's not it's not an easy task to grow your Twitter account to a huge number otherwise a lot of people would do it so i learned i read i educated myself on analytics so i found what tweets performed the best and and then we grew from there um the science podcast probably was the first thing that came about from the growing twitter account and that's because we were limited but in the character account on twitter and the science podcast allowed in longer form audio to explain concepts in deeper format and then i got to interview scientists so every episode I interview a scientist, which you really can't do as well on Twitter. <clears throat> then Twitter started uh, social audio. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. What if I interviewed a scientist live and then we could have our community interact with them? And and then we added another one, which is our biggest audio show, which is just people sharing pet stories. And as I say, it's not for everybody. Like if you tune, tune into Pet Chat, you're like, why? People are just talking about the dogs and cats. Absolutely. Um, People love their dogs and cats. But if you don't have that love, you're not going to tune into the show and that's okay. But that builds community, people having a voice and you giving them a platform to share their wins and their losses. That's that community grew grew from there. Um, Now, to be honest, the, the newsletter I started as a marketing funnel. So I did some research and newsletters are a way to you know, funnel people to some of your merchandise or your products. Um, but I build it as a community builder. So it's, it gives a little bit of background about our family. Um, it breaks down what's happening on our social audio. Yes, there's some advertisements for our merch. Um, but the newsletter ties people together from all the different pl- platforms like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, right? So, uh, and then I can have posts that are in different format in the newsletter, which people like. So the newsletter is probably the newest thing, Simon. Thanks for those insights, Jason, because I know a lot of people who are listening to this around the world, they're interested in the mechanics of how all that sort of comes together. Mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned uh, Pet Chat, uh, which is a bit (laughs) different to the science podcast. And I must say, I'm very used to saying the word podcast, but I love the fact that yours is more of a podcast. It's a -A P-A-W-D cast. P-A-W-D, yeah, podcast. Which I which I think is very cool. Um (laughs) the uh, and I've been on, I've been I I, you know, I've I've been a consumer of both. Um and I wanted to ask you just to go back to the pet chat discussion, which is you say is like a really engaged community too. That's sort of like Hmm. almost another segment of of sort of audience that you have, although I know there's a lot of overlap. Um, but you've run quizzes on that too and competitions and it's a bit more fun. Could you maybe talk to that a little bit? Because that really worked for a while, didn't it? Uh, it's still working. People really yeah. like the, yeah. So um, because I'm a teacher, I brought in some of my, the stuff that works with kids and I'm like, well, if it works with kids, it probably will work with adults because adults are just big kids, right? Um, and it's a it's a it's like an interactive game a quiz show game called Kahoot. It's free. You can set up your own account. And then we start pet chat with it. People can listen and play the game. So I, you know, of course I made sure the software worked from listening to playing the game. 
Um, and uh, it's fun. There's a, we have a sponsor, so there's prizes in the space. But more importantly, it onboards people with what happens it happened in the week. So not only do you learn about something big, because the quiz questions are around stuff that happened with Bunsen and Beaker or on the Science Podcast. So it brings together the stuff maybe you missed, and it rewards our fans for consuming our content, right? And it and it's a <clears throat> it's different. It's fun and it's get engaging. And you get there's a little leaderboard, and I shout out the leaders. And and there's usually a different winner every day. So that's the that's the game. Yeah, yeah, great. And obviously, um, when it comes to Bunsen and Beaker, you you have the images of them now. You have almost cartoon esque sort of style <laughs> of them, and yes. you have merchandise. And you have almost little comic strips of them, and there's always some caper going on, or there's there's always a little <laughs> bit of chemistry between the two of them. And yeah. I, I, could you maybe explain that a little bit to people who maybe aren't as familiar with that sort of dynamic that goes on there? Because it's <laughs> it's it's brilliant, and it, it is certainly engaging the community. It is, yeah. So on Twitter. I can tweet from either Bunsen or Beaker's perspective. And you might say, how do you do that in a text-based system? Well, they have different voices. Like they're different personalities. They're different dogs. Bunsen is this huge, very uh, like measured, calm dog. Um, and Beaker is this high energy golden. <laughs> She's adorable. So Beaker tweets in all caps. So whenever Beaker's talking, it's all capitals. And um, by accident, when something I didn't mention, Simon, that is probably one of our, our most, in, like if I check my analytics, it has the highest engagement. And that's the jokes I do on Friday called texts from Bunsen, where um, I pretend Bunsen is texting, like, you know, on your phone, different people of our family. And that's where all of these capers and storylines have come from. Some are real, some are, you know, fabricated. Um, and then in text from Bunsen, we made an ebook and, uh, now we have an audio book that's coming out and a print book that's all from this and those capers and, you know, the, how they get into trouble, um, is, is usually based on real events. Like the thing that Bunsen is best known for is his love of moose legs, because we live on a farm in the middle of nowhere in Alberta, Canada. And one winter he found eight moose legs, like every couple of days he was pulling a new moose leg out of the snow. And uh, it was just like, what is going on? And it became this ongoing joke with Bunsen. And we have a cartoonist that does our awesome cartoons. And uh, that's part of the story now, uh, Bunsen taking moose legs from moose. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's brilliant. And the imagery is fantastic. So I'd, again, I'd encourage people to check that out. Um <laughs> So I wanted to ask you something else as well, though. Um, when it comes, you you talked about funnels earlier and how sort of yeah. the newsletter, you kind of thought, well, look, I need to funnel people to different areas. And one of the things you mentioned was merchandise. And I'm just wondering how hmm. that from a an e-commerce perspective is going. Is that is that something that you're doing more of now than ever? Because you, you have some great merchandise out there and people are obviously engaged with the community. Yeah, so... The merchandise started really slow. And uh, again, I did my research and we went with print on demand services. So our e-commerce e-commerce uh, e store has two print on demand companies. And for anybody that's looking to get into e-commerce, e if you are not enormous, like maybe if we had a million followers, it'll be different. Um, but if you're doing all of the stuff yourself, like it's just me basically doing everything, print on demand allows you to have unlimited designs without risk financially to yourself. Somebody selects what they like on your website and the print on demand company makes it and the print on demand company ships to, to them. You get, you get a, a smaller cut than if you did it yourself. So we do have a lot of clothing and it is very surreal to see people out and about wearing merchandise. Sometimes I run into them, um, you know, out and about in the community now uh, as our popularity is growing, which is kind of odd. Um, and we have a calendar and stuffed animals. So we've made stuffed animals of Bunsen and Beaker um, that people just adore. So the stuffed animals and, and those other things, they are a little bit more risky financially. So what I would suggest to any creators or people looking to get merchandise that you are getting and then selling yourself is to do pre-sales, have a pre-sale, get, get people excited, um, you know, and then use the pre-sale funds to fund the purchase of the, 
the, the, the supplies that you're going to be shipping out. That's, that's probably the biggest lesson I would give folks. That's, that's great advice uh, for, for creators. Thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, Buns and Beaker also meet students in person. Uh, mm-hmm. And you post pictures of that from time to time, you know. And I'm just wondering what it's like from a and in real life when you're off social media and you know when he, when people are meeting in real life what what that's like because the uh both of those you know bunsen and beaker both of those personalities they're almost mini celebrities in their own little community now <laughs> i i'm uh, yeah it is it's quite surreal i have to, to say uh we did a show at the Edmonton Science Center so there's two major cities in Alberta Edmonton is the capital of our province and the science center asked me to come give a talk about using dogs to communicate science so it was whole, this whole thing about social media so i thought you know like 10 people would show up to my talk in Edmonton no, there was there was so many, there's hundreds of people that showed up and there was no room for people to sit and they were standing outside the auditorium and people were coming up to my wife and I and telling us just how much they love Bunsen and Beaker. And I'm not going to lie, I got emotional. Like I teared up. I didn't know what to say. Um, the people were so like gracious and what, you know, you know, we love Bunsen and Beaker. Your, your post got us through COVID, like stuff like that. That was it was pretty surreal. And then letting like the people got to pet Bunsen and Beaker um, and they were getting emotional because these are dogs they only know on, through pictures and videos and they get to see them in real life. And um, they're both quite gregarious with with people that, you know, they like getting pets and they like seeing people. Um, so, yeah, it's it's rewarding um, and surreal. What is interesting and people ask me all the time is like what my students, because I'm a teacher, what my students think of this and they could care less about the fame of Bunsen and Beaker or (laughs) that he have a big social media account. They do not care there. You know, I might show them a picture of Bunsen and Beaker at the start of class and then it's, you know, it's time to teach chemistry. They're, they're teenagers, right? They're, their whole life is themselves. So it's, it keeps me grounded teaching teenagers. I'll tell you that, or, you know, young adults. (laughs) Well, any, anybody who has teenagers or spends time around teenagers knows that they keep you grounded. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. You're not going to get a fat head teaching high school. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. Well, look, I really appreciate that. You've, you've shared some great insights into um, the world of Bunsen and Beaker and how <laughs> that all works from a science and a scientist's perspective. I want to maybe change gears a little bit, and I want to ask you a few questions, if I can, Jason, about... Go for it. Obviously, you've mentioned the word research four or five times now, and it seems like at each stage of building your community, you've had to go and research things that maybe you weren't as expert as, and you had to understand Mm. it and sort of gain knowledge, et cetera. And that's great for people to hear. And I'm just wondering that when you read, um, obviously you're reading science, I'm, I'm sure, but is there any particular book genre that you like, whether it's reading for pleasure or or you find yourself reading more and more for business now because the community has taken off? Uh, or, you know, are you just online all the time? Are you just voraciously going through tweets? When you take information on board, what do you like? Audio books, written books? Do you like a bit of fiction or is it business and science? Um, I'm not going to lie. My free time has shrunk considerably in the last couple of years. And I was a voracious reader of um, any kind of any kind of book, fiction, nonfiction, doc, you know, like bi- biographies to um, fantasy, for example, like The Hobbit or those type of books too, right? Science fiction. Um, so I'm not going to say I don't like reading because I, I really love reading. But as as my time has shrunk, um, I'm reading more um, science articles, of course, for the research that goes into the science podcast. We do threads now on Twitter, which is something that is quite popular. Um, And then I take those threads and from those threads, I make our short form video content on TikTok. And um, and then we're going to be starting YouTube soon. So I have to make sure I know what I'm talking about when I go through those science articles and the methodology and the sample size. So that that has shrunk my time a bit. Um, I'm not a consumer of content on social media. So I used to be a bit more, and that's something that I've had to give up. So unless people are tagging our account, I don't see, I just don't have time. Um, And the same thing goes for TikTok. Like I'm not a TikTok scroller. I am a TikTok creator. So uh, 
Yeah, you move I just from don't... consumption to creation, don't you? Yeah, you that's have, it's, there's it's only so much wide... time. Yeah, yeah. People are like, "Did you see that tweet?" Um, no, I did. I will never see that tweet. I don't have time, and I feel bad because there's so much good stuff out there, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's an but interesting it... question, Simon. Thanks for asking that. No, I, I appreciate your answer because it, it is it is important because I think a lot of people spend so much time consuming other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. And what they're actually doing is not focusing enough time in some cases on things that they could be creating and sharing. Mm -hmm. So I know we've all, you know, if nobody's watching, then what's the point in creating? I understand the irony in that statement, but <laughs> um, I want to ask you about TikTok just, just before we go off that point. Yeah, sure. Because like Twitter, you're, you're it's extremely successful for you. What yes. do what are you finding with your sort of, um, videos on tiktok how's that working for you what are your views on it and what's the thinking with the the move to youtube as well so um i'm so one of the things that we do with our social audio just to give you an idea of what i'm going to be doing this year is we multicast so our social audio isn't just twitter spaces i multicast to a bunch of social audio sites and then i was thinking every time i make a video it is a pain in the butt for me to post to Instagram, to post to Facebook, to post to TikTok. So I have a, I'm getting the hang of this scheduler, which just, you know, it's a, one of those scheduling programs that goes everywhere. Um, so our TikTok account was very small. And then I, as I, I've started to automate some of my Twitter with a, a program called Hype Fury. We don't really need to get into that, but it's, um, it's freed up hours and hours of my time in the week, which I've been using on short form video content they're very different C creators uh it is very tough to do be a very good text-based creator and then a video creator they're they're very very different um but our tiktok's doing okay like we're we're getting close to sixty thousand followers on tiktok um i've had uh one of our videos got 1.2 million views on tiktok and was went viral it was just about cats it was like five five amazing things about cats um so the you know TikTok is a very different thing. It's random what works, and I'm not on there enough to follow the trends because there's like use this trending sound or like I just no I don't have I don't have time for that. Maybe if we grow big enough, I can hire somebody that just sends me this stuff. <laughs> um, but it, it works, people. What works with our threads works when I do a voiceover with cute video video content of the dogs. So yeah, it's growing, um, and we'll see we'll see if it overtakes our twitter i don't know yeah it'd be interesting to see because um your, your twitter is is very large and continues to grow but uh, i won't let bunsen and beaker know that the cats went viral i'll keep that from them. Uh, <laughs> oh we there is a there is a really cute video of um beaker and bunsen meeting for the first time that that had 1.1 million views too so we've had a we've had you know a dozen big Fantastic, big yeah tiktoky yeah. things yeah yeah <laughs> Well, listen, thanks for those uh, that answers and those insights again. Um, I, I want to ask you a little bit about people that have inspired you along the way or people that you admire. That could be in a personal life, can be somebody from your childhood, it can be somebody in more recent times. But is there anybody that you look to or that you admire or that's inspired you along the way, Jason? Um, professionally, I had a, a mentor teacher. Uh, her name is Kim Burley. She's one of the smartest people I have ever met in my life. And uh, just professionally as a teacher, she was a great mentor. Um, and she was the first person I asked to be on the science podcast when I started it many, many years ago. Um, there's a, a podcaster named Cara Santa Maria. She has a podcast called Talk Nerdy, and she's one of the five uh, rogues on um, the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. It's a really, really, really big con uh, podcast. And when I was just starting, I asked her if she would be a guest. Let's like, you know, I just, hey, would you be a guest? I sent her a DM and she said, yes. This large podcaster on a, one of the largest podcasts in the world, she said, she said, yes. And then after the interview, she helped me with all of the audio tech. I didn't know what I was doing. So she's like, she took some time to explain stuff to me. And that, that has really, that, that has uh, flavored how I roll. I, if I can share something that helps other people, I will. So instead of a competition, it's a cooperation. And I, I thought that was very cool that she took the time to explain that to me. So I give her a shout out whenever I can, uh, just for being a kind person to help, to help out 
Um, so those those are two people that come to mind for sure. Um, a scientist I really look up to and admire is a, a climate scientist. Her name is Dr. Um, uh, Hohe, Catherine Hohe. She is uh, one of the leading climate scientists in the world. And she teaches climate science uh, from a lens of empathy. And that's where I got the idea for the empathy part of the, the Bunsen and Beaker content. So as, as you may or may not know, you probably know si uh, Simon, climate science is very contentious in different parts of the world. And the scientists who study it get enormous amounts of hate mail from people that don't like what they're saying. But she always finds a way to be kind um, and then explain from a lens of, of empathy. And uh, it's very hard to do sometimes extremely hard to do. And uh, I just respect that <laughs> running a large science account uh, because it's, it's tough some days when you're talking about things that, in science that people don't necessarily believe in or like. Yeah. I suppose everybody has an opinion. Uh, some of them voice them <laughs> loudly. Um, yeah. But I do love em I mean, empathy, I think as you've, you've mentioned empathy a few times now that's come mm. through loud and clear. It's nice to see a thread there back to uh, how you, uh, sort of value that now uh more than ever i suppose and also i love the term um cooperation not not competition i think that's that's a very very good way to think about things particularly in this space yeah you know some we keep some of our secrets and <laughs> close to our chest uh but with social audio i our audio programs are only as good as they are from the help of others so anything I anything I learn about social audio, I share it um, just because we wouldn't be multicasting without the help of others. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to record even or know how to run my roadcaster without the help of others. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not an audio tech guy. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a classroom science teacher. So, yeah, yeah. you got to get help. And, and if you can help, help when you can. Yeah, no, 100%. And I think it's been... It has been, whether it was during the pandemic or whether it's sort of today on Twitter spaces or Clubhouse or whatever whatever platform you're on these days, but um, there is still a willingness. There's a, there's a great willingness and a great community of people willing to help each other, and that's a uh, mm. long way that continue. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, advice that you've received. Now, I know people have helped you with your roadcaster and you, you mentioned other people who helped you do your first <laughs> sort of uh, podcast and under, figure it all out. But I'm thinking more about life advice. I'm thinking more about something that maybe stuck with you since your early days. Mm -hmm. Or if you're sharing advice with others, what do you think it's important that people know? So without, hopefully I don't uh, get too emotional explaining this advice, but it's something that our account has to deal with every day and that's pet loss. So our account has grown to such a size that um, people DM us when uh, their, their pets die. Like dogs and cats don't live as long as humans. It sucks. It's awful. And they don't. Um, and before Bunsen, we had a golden retriever named Callan. And as dogs do, they don't, they don't live forever. She got cancer and, and she died and it destroyed me. Um, the grief from losing that pet just wrecked me. And uh, we went to a dog show, you know, a couple months after her death. And it was the day the golden retrievers were being shown. And I broke down and I had, I started to cry and I went into a bathroom and I came out and one of the handlers saw me and she's like, uh, are you okay? And I said, no, I am not okay at all. And she told me this piece of advice that resonated with me and we give to people when they are hurt and that's grief. Grief can go somewhere. Um, the, the, the loss and the, the hurt and the sadness that you feel from pet loss, you can pour that into another animal. Um, and that's where Bunsen came from. So that advice is the advice we give to people when we get tagged in a post on social media of pet loss or a, a message that people send us with pet loss. Um, and for the first bit, I wasn't prepared for that because it was daily, right? Um, people pouring their hearts out to you very privately. Uh, but this piece of advice that I remembered, and, and it was the reason why we got Bunsen, um, is, is really powerful advice. And that's grief can be transformed. 
Well, listen, I really appreciate you sharing that with us, Jason, because that's an important part. And anybody who is a, a pet lover, um, it, it is a difficult time. Uh, pet loss is a challenge. And, I, mm. I, I you know, I'm, uh, there's quite a few people I know, for example, that went into sort of veterinary type services to work with animals because they love animals. And it's one of the mm. toughest sites. Uh, oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, we've talked to vets before and um People, you know, this not to bring everybody down, but uh, veterinarian doctors have the highest rate of suicide in any profession, just because it's just it's so rough. Yeah. So if you have, if you know a vet, just tell them they're amazing because they are. Hundred percent. Well, listen, thank you for sharing that. Um, and then just to, again to to maybe change gear a little bit as well. Mm. Uh, you've got a lot going on, and it's obviously compressing <laughs> your time. I don't know how you're doing it all, but. Um, when you look forward at the time of us recording this, we've kind of got this new year ahead of us. Yeah. And when you look forward to the year ahead, what are you thinking about over a three, six, nine, 12 month type period? Uh, is it just, I've got all this stuff to do. What am I going to do? Or have you got some very sort of clear thinking as to this is how I'm going to approach this year? Where are you at with that? Yeah. So we do have a game plan every month, every month we're focusing on like a different from the the business side, like a different kind of thing. This month is the ebook and the print book of text from Bunsen. Um, next month we have a stuffy that should be done being prototyped of Ginger, our cat, right? So we have something planned the every month of the year, which is new for us. <laughs> Instead of just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping something sticks, we're very planned. And also going with along with that is. Um, is I am I am automating a lot of what we do through scheduling programs. So we're at the size where if I continued to do things the way I did before, I would have no time. Like I would just totally run out of time. So I would say as creators get bigger, look at these scheduler programs um, where you make one post in the scheduler program and then it just gets shot out to all of the different social media sites. So from a, like a personal perspective, I'm looking forward to getting the hang of that over the next couple of months, because once I figured that out with Twitter, it opened up hours and hours during the week, um, which of course I filled up with making more content for another site. Um, <laughs> um, but we're also looking at YouTube because we're, we don't have a presence on YouTube and our, our videos on Twitter and TikTok do well. So why wouldn't they do well on YouTube? Like it's just a missed opportunity. And if a scheduler, scheduler can send it there anyways, why not? So that's that's kind of what we're yeah. looking forward to for the next year. And who knows, maybe this time next year, uh, I'll be retired from teaching. We'll see how things go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, listen, thanks for sharing that. It's good to hear the, the, the sort of building blocks and each month you have to plan. It's good, mm -hmm. good for people to understand that. And also, I mean, it is like with YouTube being the world's second largest search engine, which people often forget, yes. it is uh, it is a great opportunity for uh, Bunsen and Beaker and the business, of course. Mm. Um, so I, I shall I shall watch to see how that's going. And of course, automation that you mentioned as well, it's kind of vital when you re reach a certain size, because unless you're adding people like crazy behind the scenes, you have to automate your processes, don't you? Because it... There's not enough hours in the day. So thank you for sharing those, those insights. You're going to, you'll run out of hours real quick and burn yourself out. That's right. For sure. A hundred percent. Well, look, um, just before we wrap up, Jason, I just wanted to ask you, is there anything else that we haven't mentioned today? Anything else that's coming up that you'd like to share with our audience? Uh, if there is great, we'd love to hear about it. If not, if somebody wants to reach out and get in touch with the, uh, with what's going on in the science world, whether it's the newsletter, the podcast, the videos, <laughs> the world of Bunsen and Beaker, how do people reach you? Well, we're most active on Twitter. So if you search for Bunsen and Beaker and you DM us, our DMs are still open at this time. Um, that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. Uh, and then we have we switched our newsletter from review to Substack. So you can also, if you are interested in our newsletter, you can find us on Substack. Um, TikTok is our second biggest account. I don't, not sure how DMs really work there. It's kind of like an awkward system. Um, and Instagram, we are there, Facebook, we are there, but we kind of like bounce stuff to them from the scheduler. So I don't know if I'm going to get back to you if you DM me on, uh, Instagram. So probably Twitter or, uh, the newsletter is the best way. 
And how are you finding Substack? Because a lot of people have made the switch. I love it. Yeah, like it's it's a learning curve. When you switch from one thing to another, you're like, what? How come this doesn't work? Um, but Substack has a lot of good things going for it. You can, it's free. <laughs> um, and uh, you can have unlimited subscribers. So there's no, you don't have to pay. You could have like, we're, we're just about over 3000 subscribers, which it blows my mind for uh, people want to l- read our news. <laughs> um, and we're not a marketing, you know, we're not giving out hot marketing tips, which I think is hilarious that people are just want to know more about our family. Um, yeah, it's, it's once you learn Substack, it's great. You can put video, uh, like you can put posts from Twitter and TikTok in there and Instagram, um, and which hyperlink back to the site. So yeah. Look at Substack if you're looking for a newsletter, folks. Um, I should get, you know, I should be affiliate for them, I guess. <laughs> well, look, from your hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on Twitter that are engaged with you, you're growing TikTok and Instagrams and soon to be YouTube videos. Um, I'd encourage people to get in touch. And thanks for sharing those links, Jason. We'll we'll add them uh, when we publish the episode. Super, super. Uh, well, look, that, that brings us nicely uh, to the end of this episode with Jason uh, Zakowski. It's been great to have you on the Global Discussion. And uh, thanks to everybody who's been watching or listening to this episode. And as we grow the Global Discussion, we would like you to follow, like, and subscribe and do all the things you normally do with uh, podcasts. And we hope that you join us again for more discussions with creatives, leaders, and thinkers. And all that's left for me to do is to thank you, Jason. It's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. Thanks very much for being a guest on the Global Discussion today. Thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. 